Good morning, saints. Can we bow our heads and pray for the word today? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you honor and praise. Father, I worship and adore you. Father, I bring this word unto the throne of grace, undiluted the word, that, Father, you speak to our hearts in accordance to what we need today. Father, you know what we need in our lives. We know the food that we require, which is, Father, for our spirit to grow. In the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus, I pray that, Father, we shall receive in this word we manifest and begin to do something upon our lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I want us to go and read in the book of Galatians 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Today, my verse is very short in accordance to the topic that I want us to address today. The topic for today will be an, entangle, an entanglement. An entanglement is a situation or a relationship that you are involved in that is difficult to come out of. An entanglement is a situation or relationship that you are involved in that is difficult or nearly impossible to come out from. So as we read in the book of Galatians 5, 1, it says that we need to stand fast, therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Of bondage. So as we all know that before we are born again, there's something that has entangled us, there's something that has hold us ransom or in, in bondage that we couldn't get out of until Christ intervened. And we all know that the Satan has come to kill, to steal, kill and destroy. And that is him, his mandate ever since, ever since he was thrown from heaven. So his work is opposite to that which God wants to do upon our lives. And we find that even if we can say we are saved, there are things that are difficult to get rid of. There are things that will still want to entangle us. There are things that will still want to keep us in bondage. Though we can say we have received Christ, you find that we are still struggling with certain things upon our lives. We are still struggling to certain things that we always have done before we receive Christ. But this thing doesn't want to let us go. And if I can give an example, we'll go back into the Old Testament, whereby the Israelites, when Moses went to Egypt to try and set them free, it was a difficult task for the men of God, for Moses, because these guys have been in slavery. They've been in bondage for more than 400 years. And we find that generation to generation, kids were born into slavery. There are things that were happening that they got used to. And their mind had adjusted to the slavery mentality. That therefore, when Moses had to release them from bondage, it was a difficult task for Moses. Then when they received resistance because the enemy didn't want to let them go, the enemy wanted to keep them in slavery. And Moses had to deal with, the, with, with things that has circled upon their mind or upon their lives that, that has entangled them for 400 years, generation to generation. And they began to fought with the person who wanted to, care, to keep them free. Instead of focusing on the enemy, they began to fought the person who wanted to set them free because they were used to entitlement. entitlement. So that thing that has entangled them, they wanted to keep it, not because they wanted to keep it, because they were used to it, they were not comfortable enough to let it go because that, that is what they were used for to all their lives. They were used to this entanglement. They were used to this bondage. They were used to this lifestyle. Even if they knew it was harm to them, even if they knew it was not good for them, there's something that is better for them. The promise they knew, they knew about Canaan. They knew about the promised land. They knew about a better place. They knew about a good life, but they didn't want to let go of the entanglement. 
They didn't want to let go of the bondage because they got too much comfortable to it. It's something that you get comfortable to it, not because it's doing good to you, but because you got used to it. It's not easy to detach. It's not easy to let go. You'll find that a lot of people are living with this circumstance. They are living with this situation, not because they don't know it's wrong to do that, not because they don't know their better life out there, not because they don't know it's not the right life, but you find that you are living in this relationship. You are living in this situation knowing very well it's not the right relationship, it's not the right thing to do. And there's a lot of examples that I can use today, but I don't want to use it. In your heart now, as I'm speaking the word, you know very well conviction is keeping in your heart. You know very well through the conviction from the Holy Spirit, what is that area in your life that you don't want to let go of. You know very well it's not the right thing to do. You know very well you keep your foot you go to that place that you know you shouldn't go. You do that activity that you don't you know very well you are not supposed to do. You know you you keep on lying. You know you are not supposed to lie, but you can't separate yourself from this bondage. You can't separate yourself from the entanglement that has entangled you. Maybe it's just from generation to generation. You know in your family, no one gets married. You know in your family, no one stays in marriage. You know in your family, there's no one who is graduating. You know in your family, there's no one who is getting a proper job. But you keep on in this entanglement. You want to stay there because it's like a comfort zone that you know is not the right place to be. But you keep on resonating in this entanglement or the yoke or the bondage because you got too much comfortable for a long time in that situation. But the word of God is saying, stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Christ wants to make you free in that situation. Just like he made the Israelites to be free. After many years, the Israelites, they got comfortable. We find that in the desert, when they were just close into the place of liberty you find that they begin to fight with moses because they wanted to draw moses back you are in that situation maybe you know that god wants to take you out you know that you are in a way of going into liberty but you keep on you want to draw back the enemy keep on wanting to draw you back into a place of slavery the place that you know very well is not a comfortable place you used to cry day in and day out but the lord when he wants to push you out you keep on wanting to push back into a place of entanglement what is your place of entanglement today you know that place i don't need to mention it but conviction right now is telling you of that place of entanglement that you know very well that christ want to set you free in that place of entanglement even if it means you are the first person in your family to play to to to, to have that place of freedom let it be let you be the first that you the first person in your family to get the freedom and the next generation will begin to celebrate that freedom i want us to go in the book of isaiah 40 28 and the man of god the prophet of god is saying have you not known have you not heard the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth neither faith neither faints nor is weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases the strength even youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint. 
And I realized that I want to give us a small example here. They mention an eagle. The word of God is giving an example of us as an eagle. It's saying that we will mount up like eagle. An eagle doesn't fight its enemy in their base. An eagle doesn't fight the enemy in the ground. An eagle takes the enemy up into the air. That's why in the air above the sky, there's no other bird that, that can survive there. There's no animal that can survive there. The eagle doesn't fight the enemy in its territory. The eagle will take its enemy outside of its territory and it will take the enemy above its territory because the enemy has got a territory it can only fight and conquer you if you try to fight it in its territory if you try to fight your enemy in your slavery if you try to fight your enemy in your bondage you will not win the fight you need to take the enemy outside of its comfort zone you need to take the enemy in the sky where you know very well that that's where you thrive in the sky that's where you will conquer the eagle takes the enemy outside of its comfort zone if you try to fight Satan in his comfort zone when you are still in bondage in his territory you will not win any battle You'll forever be defeated. But I want you to go into the throne of grace. Where Isaiah says, his understanding is unsearchable. In the secret place of God, above the sky, when the enemy is, is weak, that's where you need to take your issues to God so that the enemy cannot overpower you. So that that is your place of strength because it's the place of God that is the place of God take your issues take your bondage in the place of God because the enemy will not survive I want us to go into the throne of grace today I don't know what you're going through you wanted to leave that issue for so long but that issue keep on dragging you back it keep on dragging you back it keep on dragging you back and you feel powerless, you feel weak, you feel defeated. The only thing that you can settle for is the place of bondage because you don't have strength to fight it. You don't have strength to come out of it because it sounds like it's a comfort zone. I want to go into the throne of grace today and pray with you and pray with myself and pray with my family. And as we pray, I want you to pray as well, wherever you are, and pray for this service that we keep on having every Sunday. And keep on praying for you, for me as well, as I minister the word. It's not an easy thing, but I want you to pray, continue praying. I know that there are some of you that are praying for this service. They're praying for the word. Keep on praying for me. Keep on praying for my family. And keep on praying for the word. And keep on praying that the Lord will help us to push through and keep on, keep on, keep on and keep the good fight of faith because we know that there's a reward. And let's so that God can help us to go out of the situation that we cannot just go out of ourselves, that we cannot just take, out our, take ourselves out, but we need the hand of God to take us out of that situation. I want us to pray for those things, all of us, not just me, but I want every one of us, wherever you are, in your car, in your house, in your room, in your private space, I want us to pray that the Lord will give us strength in this hour, in this situation, with those situations that want us, want us back into the life that we don't want to be back at. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your word. Your word cannot come out void. Father, I need to pray that, Lord, there are some of us that the enemy want us to, be st to stay in our entitlement, in our entanglement. It doesn't matter what it is. That situation that we have tried for many years to come out of, 
that situation that makes us not to get jobs, that situation that makes us not to graduate, that situation that makes us not to get married, that situation that makes us not to stay in marriage even if we can be married, that situation that keeps us to be a lying people even if we don't want to lie anymore, that situation that wants to keep us as fornicators, that situation that wants to keep us as adulterers, that, keep, uh, that wants to keep us as drunkards, that wants to keep us as nothing. No, no matter how much we try to work, we can't move forward. We keep on going back. We want to go forward, but we don't see what we're doing. But I want to, to break the bondage today. I want to cut the ties of those relationships that we want to keep on withdrawing from, but we keep on going back. Lord, help us to move away. Lord, help us to go out of bondage, just like the Israelites, where we made the way where there was no way, and the enemy keep on pursuing them. But Lord, I want to pray for your mighty hand. I want to pray today for the victory upon those situations, that there will be children that will be fine after this prayer, that there will be marriages that we will hold after this prayer, that there will be people that will get marriage after this prayer, that there will be people that will be employed after this prayer, that there will be people that the business will begin to stand after this prayer, that there will be people that will be liberated from the spirit of lust after this prayer, that there will be people that will be liberated from the spirit of drunkenness. After this prayer, that there will be people that will be liberated from the people from the spirit of fornication after this prayer lord i pray for liberation lord i pray that we begin to have sight upon that situation in the mighty name of jesus father you are mighty father you are god you don't change you are the same yesterday today and tomorrow liberate us oh god in the mighty name of jesus that will begin to see light where there's no light that will begin to see light from the tunnel, that will begin to see the future that we never saw before, that will begin to see the liberation and the hand of God from the enemy that has enslaved us for so long. We have tried to come out. We have tried with our own might, but we failed of God. Help us to have the spirit of an eagle to take the enemy in the sky from a place where it cannot defeat us anymore. In the name of Jesus, we take the enemy into the throne of grace, the place of power, the place of liberation, the place of conquering. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.